It is 2.53 on Friday. David Parks and his lovely fiance are behind me with his team from Carry the Love. We're headed to the union, the student union, for to get set up for a worship night that we're having tonight. And so this video is going to talk all about what David does and what his crew does as they're on this tour called Carry the Love as they preach the gospel on college campuses, which is awesome. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um... Just talk a little bit, what, what's Carry the Love, what do y'all do? Okay, so Carry the Love is, um, it's a group of people from all over the states, and we have some internationals that really go after college universities here in America mainly, and we really want to see Jesus made famous on campuses. We, we want to see uh, him been redefined to people. People, uh, when they hear of Jesus, they immediately think of church or religion, but he's a man who really loves us and has a ton he wants to talk to us about. So. I think uh, representing Jesus in a fresh way to people, and especially younger people that are on college campuses, and they really do want to know that they're seen, they're loved by God, and that they can have a personal relationship with Him. So two nights ago, we saw uh, three kids, um, their knees were healed, so we we'll sometimes ask the Lord for healing over the room, and He'll break in to do certain healings, so we'll see breakthroughs in that. We even see with campus ministries, a lot of times these ministries have been on on these campuses for decades and then to come in we like to be a spark or an activator or catalyst mm -hmm. for these campuses and for these groups do you like do you like document it do you like write stories down like all the stuff you see yeah so we have um yeah we have the craziest as much as i don't like group me we have the craziest group me um it's like a three-year group me that just you can go as far up as you want just loaded with story after story picture after picture of the craziest healings and testimonies of what God did and what he's still doing. And so I would actually, it would be so fun to somehow print that whole group me out yeah. and start to kind of show it in a blog way. In that group me, that's you talking to all the other teams that are around oh, the state. Oh yeah. How many, how many how teams How fun is total? that? Yeah, we have, so right now there is, there is six teams out. Each team has enough for a, ba a full band that is really good in, their, in worship and then uh, preachers and then of course um, admin and connectors and ministry teams so, so what, what every every team so I like to do tons of media as much as I can document the events David as takes well. awesome pictures good where can they find your stuff um, so I'm I'm on Instagram at, and Facebook if you add David, David on Parks. Facebook Parks yes and I'm newly engaged so a lot of my photos have turned into Hannah and me <laughs> and uh, which I don't hate at all I love that um, there's seasons for all of it, so, but yes, love adventure, love to go out and travel um, in the midst of doing crazy ministry stuff. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to always try and figure out how to, how to take those cool artsy shots in rooms that God's moving in hearts. Mm -hmm. It's always tricky because yeah. it, it may not be as cool as Yosemite or as the Grand Canyon, but there's as far as aesthetically pleasing to yeah. the eye. Just tell a funny story. I don't know, it's something funny that's happened um, mm. like as you start the tour. Okay, so two days ago, rented the trailer for the U-Haul to pick up the sound gear, and uh, <laughs> my buddy Zach and I, the insurance was like 10 bucks a day. It was gonna be several hundred more dollars to rent, mm -hmm. and Zach and I were like, we don't wanna pay any more money for this, so we're just gonna rent it. It's Oklahoma, what's the worst that can happen? We have huge parking lots here, big highways. It's not cram-packed like I would say the East Coast is or yeah. anything like that. So we're like, oh, no insurance. We get on the road, pack all the gear, two hours later, get hit. The U-Haul gets hit, and I am just like, no! Like, the last thing I wanted to happen uh -huh. is immediately day of, get hit. So, so we're then like, all right, what are we gonna do now? So we immediately knew we needed to just call U-Haul, talk to them, see what happened. We, the next morning, take the, the trailer in, and the manager of U-Haul, he just comes up, he's like, I told you guys you needed insurance. He's like, man. <laughs> And we we're like, well, can we get it now? We, we still need insurance. We'll, we'll pay for the damage. We need more insurance. And he's like, no, you had a 30 minute window when you bought the when you bought the trailer. And we're like, come on, dude, please. Like, we gotta do something about this. So he's talking to us. He loved us. He thought we were hilarious. And we ended up, uh, get this, instead of paying the several hundred for insurance, mm -hmm. he had us pay for the damage, which was only 40 bucks mm -hmm. for us to pay for the damage. He said he would help bang it out and be fine. And then he ended up getting us insurance, and we paid the same price as we did normally renting it. 
and somehow he worked the system because he loves beating the system with his U-Haul company. So he ended up giving us insurance for basically the same price as just buying the trailer. <laughs> Except now, yeah, it all worked out so well and we saved a couple hundred bucks from having that accident. So That's awesome. God works it all out. And if you're here in Stillwater, just know you can always come find us. And if you want, you can always come to California and hang out with us. California. Yeah, oh, that was my question. Uh, <laughs> You drove from California to here. Yeah, so uh, we had several of us drive from California out. We had four cars and we were hauling a trailer on a Sequoia. Uh, and it was hectic and we went through some snowstorms to get here. Uh, sometimes we're burning hot and other times we were super cold. Uh, it was like 25 hours, so awesome. And uh, we crashed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This this. Um, older woman, she's probably 80, loves our team. She just opened up her whole house to us, okay. fed us granola in the morning, and um, <clears throat> and then we, we left and accidentally left the trailer open, dumped all our gear out as we're backing out of the driveway. What? Just the classic tour life stories. Hi, Grace. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, are you like interviewing here? We're having a little media moment. Nice. <laughs> Was that your friend? Are you talking yeah, about? that's Grace, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's more than enough. Make a little vlog? Yeah, I was thinking just like telling your story just in a separate video. I'm, the goal the goal this year is to upload uh, twice, a, twice a week. So I have, really? I have like my weekly recap and I always do yeah. I want something else. And so I'm learning how to do that and how to make it fun and interesting and tell a story that people want to hear about. Um, so it kind of requires maybe getting outside your comfort zone doing something like this. Because I, I get frustrated with people doing the same stuff yeah. over and over again. Yeah. Like the same style video. Yeah. And yeah. I've, I, it's hard too, especially with now social media. Mm -hmm. You have, you have uh, literally God has unlocked the door. I mean, I know whoever dreamed up Instagram, I'm sure it was a God dream because usually God's in the midst of all of it. but. They're unlocking the door for people to now see. Um, we now have instant access to anything in the world going on. If there's an event, usually you type in a hashtag, you're gonna see instant access to it. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at this and I'm like, man, how far media has been shifting recently. As much as I like to get competitive in media, or I, I, I'll get jealous in media because I am, um, I am one that loves to do um, awareness and content and media through photography and video. I love seeing that um, God showed me when, when the Paris shootings happened with ISIS in Paris last year. Was it last year? Two years ago. Yeah. Um, when that happened, I was on the road and I, I didn't have signal right when it happened. Um, but when I got service at a gas station, I immediately pull up my phone and I'm seeing live video and photos of what's happening on the other side of the world and I'm immediately weeping and praying mm -hmm. and I just God immediately was he was revealing to me that we are generation X we are the first generation in all of history that get to be so unified in the world that we at one point can see something and pray immediately mm -hmm. and it doesn't take days or weeks to get to us and I felt God's heart so much saying oh However much it gets abused, it doesn't matter. I'm behind this and I'm gonna use it for people to see the kingdom and immediately the whole world will see it at once. And so bringing media when you really see Jesus and are able to, to pull in your creative skills that of course you know deep down comes from the Lord. Um, there's this natural like, I, as good as I am and as much work I really put into it, the way I see, I didn't just naturally, it, it came naturally, I didn't just fall into this. I think a lot of it comes from God and from the Holy Spirit really wanting us to see certain ways. Mm -hmm. And so then using that skill, of course you can use it professionally, you can use it secularly, but even using it for the glory of God, it's such a fun, beautiful gift to get to give and pour out. Mm -hmm. And so many, so many love to, um, love to see it and they so honor and respect it. So I think always allowing that um, to be a forefront of like, it doesn't matter what kind of work you're doing, um, knowing that the glory of God's behind it and that at any point you can really, um, you can really push the kingdom of heaven um, and bring awareness in that way. And it's such a fun fulfillment. I can, I can easily photograph and make good money, but it's not nearly as satisfying 
as doing something that I know is meant for God or meant for something way bigger than myself, and I may not get paid at all, I find much more satisfaction and success in life when I'm doing that than when I'm marketing myself in a way that I may be able to, um, to make some more cash. So as much as we need cash to survive, I've found over the past few years as we've traveled all over the country and done stuff for the Lord that I really do, um, I really do enjoy being in the seasons with God and I don't have to always fight for that cash. I think He always will provide if we seek Him first. So it's awesome. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. When I was finishing up doing a lot of media and content here in Oklahoma, um, I, I went and did a missions trip with YWAM and started, I really wanted to explore some more of God's heart. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that, um, I felt like it was time to transition to do some more missions work and start to go full time running after God in that way. And uh, the Lord told me um, about the fact that I was going to be creating a Holy Spirit camera. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? And I, in my head, I'm like, what is it, some invisible thing that can document? And I, and I really felt like God was saying, no, you're going to use your skills. And instead of someone looking at an image saying, oh, that's cool, they're going to look at an image and feel God's presence and say, oh my gosh, I can see God in this picture and I can see God in this moment. And so I just, I felt over the years that um, it's not so much a spiritual deal as much as it is like you using your craft and using your skill in a way that you're really doing it, not for your own benefit, but really for the benefit of others, that God will use it in crazy ways. And I've, I've noticed, I'll go around the country and people will still come up to me, even from other states and saying like, hey, I've wept over your photos. And I realized, oh my gosh, like, Maybe it is the word that the Lord gave me several years ago. It really has come to pass, even though I may not be no, I, I may not see it in my own self, or I may not see this perfect God image. But people are really impacting, and they're being impacted by the Lord through some of the media that's been created. So um, it's faithfully believing and saying yes to what you feel like God's been telling you. And now I I notice from my own life. Like the more I lay it down and really just go after Jesus and documenting whatever I feel like I'm supposed to document, um, I get put in the craziest places. And so I'm like, <clears throat> last year got to be put on two of the biggest Christian stages in the country with Azusa now having 70,000 people. And I got to be on stage with that. And then we were at an event with over 400,000 in, in Washington, D.C. Um, together 2016. And I'm just, I get stunned being like, man, this is all because I said yes to Jesus. This isn't because I earned my way and marketed my way perfectly into getting it. I really said yes to God, kept myself hidden. No one knew who was taking those images. Um, and that's the goal. I would rather have the fun adventure with Jesus and know that deep down he sees me and, and I'm getting recognition that way than for me to get um, an extra couple hundred likes on my photos, um, but yet feel this, this longing of like, I'm still feeling empty. There's still, a, it never truly satisfies. I need more likes, I need more comments. Um, I need more people to come up to me. But in reality, knowing that I'm following Jesus and doing it um, with Him, I find way more success and satisfaction. And the likes can start to diminish and it still doesn't matter, I'm still having fun with it. Because um, it was never mine in the beginning, it was always His. Love it too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy though? I saw a picture of like, I photographed a room and uh, the Lord, and, I, and I, saw a, I saw a picture of someone looking at the image and they immediately got hit with Holy Spirit and they said, oh my gosh, what a crazy moment. God was in this. Um, and so I was like, dang, that's cool. Well, I'll just keep photographing events and seeing what happens. So yeah, I've never, I've never really strived to work too hard in making something perfect. I've always just tried to just document what's in front of me.